All right. I'm going to show you how to take your quadratic and switch it into a couple different forms and tell a little bit of information about it. Um, so we've got y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. And I have it in standard form. I need it in factored form. So I'm going to factor this quadratic. Draw my diamond. Up top in this diamond always goes the a times the c. So if you forgot, I'll write the standard form like this. So we've got a is the, one, the number out front, which should be 1. b is 6, c is 5. So a times c in this case will be 5. 6 is b, so that's going to go on the bottom. And I need two numbers that multiply together to give me 5, but add together to give me 6, which will be 1 and 5. All right? So we've done that a bunch of times. Now I need to create the box. And what goes in the first box right here, the bottom left, is the first term. The last term, c, goes here. And then I put 1x, 5x. You might see people do it. I, I don't know that it's really that different, but they might do this. They might say 5x squared and 6x. Uh, x, and then they would just do one of these. So the only thing that's different is having the x's there. As long as you make sure that you do it right in the box, you should be fine. I need to figure out what goes here, 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 and here. So two things that multiply together to give me x squared, and that's going to be x and x, because x times x is x squared. Now I need to do x times something over here to give me 5x. It's going to be 5 x times something over here to give me 1x, which will be 1. And then you want to check to make sure 1 times 5 is 5, and it is. Now we can write our factored form using this information. We're going to use this, the side, and the bottom. So we are simply rewriting this, and we're just writing it in a different form. It's actually useful for us later. That, right here, x plus 5 times x plus 1 is the same thing as this. If we multiply that out, we get this back. And it's helpful for us because we can use this factored form to find out our x-intercepts. But first, we want to figure out what our y-intercept is. Now, I can think of a few different ways to do this. Our y-intercept, if you think back to when we did linear um, equations, If we have an xy coordinate grid, here's the y-axis, there's the x, where the line crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. Where the line or curve crosses the x-axis, those are the x-intercepts. So if I want to find out a point on this graph where it crosses the y-axis, the x-coordinate when it crosses the y-axis, I'll repeat that, the x-coordinate the x-coordinate when I cross the y-axis is 0. So like any point on this y-axis, the x-coordinate is 0, because I haven't gone right or left. So like right here, for example, the x-coordinate, 0, right? Because I haven't gone right or left at all. So to figure out what the y-intercept is, I can simply plug in x equals 0. And I can do that in either equation, this one or this one. If I do this for the top one, what that will look like, and I will show you that right here as a side note. So y equals 0 squared. I, I just simply plugged in 0 for x to find my y-intercept, right? For the same reason that I just told you. So y equals 0 squared is 0. So that goes away. 6 times 0 is 0, so that goes away. And then I'm just left with 5. So this graph crosses the x or the y axis at y equals 5, which right here, that's where it crosses. So if I write it as a point, it's going to be 0, 5. Again, x is 0, y is 5. 
Now let's say I want to figure out where my x-intercepts are. I'm going to use something called the zero product property. So we're going to shift this way. We're going to move on down. Shifting, shifting, shifting. OK. I'm going to write it in factored form again so you can see. OK. I want to know the x intercepts. That's where it crosses the x-axis. Similarly to the y-intercept, I need to set y equal to 0 in, to find the x-intercept. So I'm going to say 0 for y, because if I have any point on the x-axis, I haven't gone up or down at all, right? I'm still on the x-axis, so my y-coordinate is always going to be 0 for the x-intercepts. X, um, And this is where we use the zero product property. Anything times zero equals zero. So if this equals zero, then the whole thing is zero. If this equals zero, the whole thing is zero. This being the factor x plus five, and this being that factor x plus one. So what I do is I set each factor equal to zero. Right? I took this, set it equal to zero, took this, set it equal to zero, and then I solve for x. Subtract 5 from both sides. There's one, one solution, and then do the same thing here. There's my other solution. And now I can go back this way. Moving back, moving back, moving back. Ugh, dizzy yet? Okay. Now I can write my x intercepts. My x intercepts are at negative 5, 0. And negative 1, 0, using the zero product property. Last thing, I'd like to find my vertex. So I'm going to do this something. I guess I could show the calculation right here. So I'll show my calculation right here. Hopefully, that's in the field of view here. So we'll have, we need the vertex is at the very top or the very bottom of our curve. So it's going to be our maximum or our minimum. In this case, it's going to be our minimum. So to, if I show you a little sketch, our graph looks like something like this. It's the very bottom point. So there's an x and a y there. The, to find the x, there's a formula to find it. My x, that point, the vertex, is going to be negative d over 2a. Now think about it. Where would B and A come from? Where are those just letters? Well, back up there, AX squared plus BX plus C. What's our A, B, and C? We actually don't even need C. We need B and A. B was 6. So I'm going to write it for our formula. It's going to be negative 6 over 2 times 1. So negative 6 divided by 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. That's our x coordinate for our vertex. I still need my y coordinate. So think back to when we did systems of equations. When we did systems of equations, we solved for one variable. It was an x or y. And when we needed the other one, we plugged that answer back in. So we're going to do the same thing here. I'm going to plug my x is negative 3 back into one of these originals. Standard form or factored form would work. And I'm going to do that down here. So it'll look like this. Negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 5. So I plugged in my x is negative 3 into my original. So there used to be x's here, now there's negative 3's. Negative 3 squared. That's going to be negative 3 times negative 3, so that's going to be positive 9 plus 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 plus 5. So right here, I could plug all this in the calculator, or I could just do this in my head. So 9 plus negative 18, so that's going to be negative 9 plus 5, it's going to be negative 4. Unless I made a serious error. 
So that's this, that's the Y for my vertex. So I go back up and I plug that back in. The other thing that I asked you to do on these problems is to graph. And we plugged in a bunch of numbers to check that by using the table in the calculator. So if we go back this way, hopefully very carefully, all right, I could graph some of those points. So I know you might not see it as a frame, but there was our y-intercepts. We also had a point here that was negative 5, negative 1. We had a vertex of negative 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. Those are only a few points on the graph, but your graph will look something like this when you graph it. Um, it won't be a dotted line, it'll be a solid line, but I just took my time doing that. It'll be a solid line, and they go on forever, that's why there's arrows on the end. When you do this in your table, you plug it into y equals, and then you look at your table and you look at each point. You can graph all of these points by increments of one usually, but there's an infinite amount of them. And that pretty much wraps up how you would solve for the vertex, how you would change into factored form, find the y-intercept, x-intercepts, and you could do this with any of them. If you're trying to find y-intercepts, the concepts that I showed you for y-intercepts and x-intercepts are really consistent with cubics, or with absolute value, or for anything that you're going to come up with. All right, thanks, hope that works. <laughs>